All right, so we're back with the Adia Mai podcast, and this week we have a very special friend and uh, longtime attorney, and now Uh-oh. he is the uh, principal of uh, the UX, UX Group. We like to call it recovered attorney. Recovered, recovered attorney. attorney. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we got Andrew today on the podcast, and we're going to be discussing River Landing and the project and a little bit about his past. Yeah. Okay, welcome, Andrew. Thank you. Happy to be doing this. No. Oh, no. You, this, is, this is a good, informative uh, podcast because we're, you're going to tell Miami a lot of things today that people are wondering. I'll tell but, you this. Look at all that pressure he puts yeah. on me. <laughs> Most podcasts usually invite influencers you know, or people who you think are influencers. These are the real influencers in Miami. That's it. Absolutely. These are people who are building structures that are going to last a lifetime here and are changing lives and changing communities, especially these, in this case. These are the ones that are making Miami business for the influencers to come Correct. and 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 influence. Yeah. So especially by the river, we all know that the river is growing. So Andrew, yep. I think that's like the first question. Like talking about this project, the River Landing, we're going to go deeper into it. Why the selection of that lot or that area for this project? Well, but before that, remember River Landing for the. Folks that don't know it, where do you see River Landing from? When you're driving through 836, you see you see that beautiful building right there next to the river. You see all those signs right there. It says Tar. What does it say? It says, does it have Target? No, it has. Uh, it has. Well, you know Publix, what? This is Ross. where Target has to come in. Okay, mm-hmm. we have a Ross. We have a Publix, and so everybody always tells me, "What is that over there?" Well, here it is. It's called the River Landing. Andrew. So you do see it from 836. Yep. It's, that, it's that very large building. It's it's uh, 10 acres on the Miami River. And we have a mixture of big box stores and uh, local local uh, local retailers. So we'll have a Publix, a Ross, a TJ's, a Burlington, Ulta, Five Below, Planet Fitness, Old Navy as our big box anchors. But then we fill that in with junior anchors we have an optical boutique that that is called miami optical we have a nail salon sessi salon we have facel uh boulangerie uh we have a lime mexican um and then we have some we, we have some mixed in there also some smaller nationals a chick-fil-a a pet supermarket mm. uh a claire's uh etc so we we have a little something for everyone you asked the question of what made us come to this area this city. yeah Fr- frankly it was that uh after the great re- real estate recession all the developers were again looking at brickle and miami beach and the biscayne quarter and we didn't feel that we wanted to compete in development and acquisition of land where every other developer was already looking and um in this neighborhood we had the bones of incredible economic structure you had the largest employment base in the county 70,000 people come to work every day in this area. The buying power when we bought the property in 2014 was $2.6 billion wow. in payroll. Well, the, lar- the second largest in the county after the airport and the seaport combined. So in order to get to equal the payroll of the health district, civic district, you need to combine two county operations. That's a huge payroll. area. I call that like a small little city. But that's like its own city or the whole civic, the courthouses, all that. That's, it's another world there. Well, that's an incredible fun fact. Yeah. Uh, and so that was the idea. The yeah. idea was to take that, those 70,000 people and the Miami River and use that as, as an anchor for development. So you had 70,000 people who had demand for shopping, entertainment, restaurants, and parking. <laughs> and then you had the Miami River. And who doesn't like to be near water or, near, or be near nature? Yeah. So the idea was to create that hub where we could s- essentially start a new area of the city. Gotcha. Actually, now that you say the Mary River, this is the kind of a question for both of you. I'm uh, more new school. So me growing up, never really did anything by the river, never really was anything to do by the river. I hear that back then, you know, 30 years ago, 25 years ago. So was the river like a popping place? Was there like uh, events and things along those lines, good restaurants, good places to go to at one point? You, you had a mixed bag on the river, yeah. right? In the in the in in Miami's <laughs> drug days, yeah. the, uh, the Miami Vice days, you had a reputation the river is a place where 
bo- bones and cars and things were buried, but you still had restaurants. Garcia's has been on the river yeah. for ages, as Casablanca as well. And those were restaurants were started because the families that owned them were doing their own fishing and shrimping and lobstering gotcha. and crabbing. And they decided, oh, I have extra. Let's have a restaurant. Yeah. So they had the fish house, and the fish house was connected to the restaurant. So the food was there. And then uh, where River Landing is, that was the Mahi Shrine Auditorium. Uh, Very the, famous, famous, famous auditorium. The Shriners are known for ra- uh, having uh, uh, um, offices and event space near hospitals. They raise money for sick children. And here they had their auditorium. It was seventeen thousand square feet. It 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 was it was very famous. It had a lot of events in my Frank Sinatra saying. That's what I was going to say. A lot of famous people went to Muhammad the Ali yeah. boxed here. There was a, there was a I, Muhammad I, Ali match there. I don't know who he boxed that table with, but I was a famous. famous and uh, uh, Mr. Three Hundred Five actually had a nightclub there called the Temple. Yep. Yeah. Pitbull. So it 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 had great roots in our community. It's incredible. I mean, it, it, the the, hit, the river has history. Yeah, the bet. river has history. You know like what I'm the, saying? That's what I was. I mean, you you've been there working river landing for about a decade, a better part of a decade now. You've been yes, on the property. We, yes, uh, we have. We 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 uh, closed on the property in 2014. Okay, and um, how did this idea to have a river landing originate? You know, whose idea was it, or was it you know? Tell me a little bit about the like the aha moment of we're going to do this. the The idea was that we should build a project that became an anchor in the health district that brought people from their workplace over at the hospitals or the courthouse to this environment. Yeah. To do that, we needed we needed uh, retail, we need restaurants, and we need living. Um, so we combined all that together in one large mixed use project. But we just, when you look at the retail, Berkeley City Center was already moving forward as a luxury. Correct. And that that, uh, really attracted a small segment of our community. Yeah. Our idea was to open up the river to all of our community. So you want to come and hang out, hang out on the river. So we said, okay, to do that, the people that are driving home from work or that leave work, we should have a, a supermarket. That became a Publix. Of course. You, mo- most people in Miami are shopping discount retailers, Burlington, Ross, TJ. You see every corner. So we, we had to convince them to, to be part of our, our project. But we wanted to fill in all of that with local opportunity. And so we, uh, we drew up a, a project that in architecture mixed the the national retailers with the local retailers. So, listen, I think the the for me River Landing. I worked at UM in the medical campus years ago, and I always thought that by Jackson. And I always thought, you know, this is something that didn't even exist. The shrine was there. I always said this is a place that you need that because you have so many executives and people, doctors. You had residents. You had so many people that came through Jackson Memorial U of M over there that needed a place to like, you know, live. It have entertainment, you know, that you can say, I can, you know, I yeah. just crossed the, the street from here. You have the whole county, you know, the whole courts. So I think that River Landing really is 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 an anchor in, not because it's a river, but it's an anchor in an area that was really overlooked. And I think that what you, what you guys, what you guys have done here and uh, has really made a big impact. And not only now for the people that live there, but even for people that live in other places around me, that I live in South Miami area, we just went to dinner the other night there. We we went to dinner with you, and and I was I went home and I told my wife, I go, listen, you don't understand. I mean, I, it was a spectacular place. Yep. You're, you're by the river. I personally like it better there. I'm not going to mention other restaurants that you know that by other rivers, but I like that area better. Yeah, because I feel it's the nicer, beautiful area of the river. If it makes sense. Thank you. And wait, that's only one restaurant. Correct. That's open. Yeah. So next yeah. month, our second nice restaurant will open. Which, in. by the way, let's mention it was uh, Tanuki. 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 Tanuki River Tanuki. Landing. Spectacular. Yeah. Very spectacular. romantic. Spectacular. Yeah. I mean, the outside. I mean, I recommend it for happy hour. I mean, we, we Ed and I were leaving and we just said, you know what? We got to do an office thing here. Yep. 
you know so next month elia will open okay and that that they're having a grand so- opening right probably in may probably in may okay yeah and they uh that's going to be our second upscale restaurant and then either late 2024 early 2025 we'll have our last two restaurants that open along the river and the idea was to create that as its own oasis away from what's happening in the shopping center so you should be able to sit at a restaurant and feel that you got away from the hustle and bustle of the day yeah. or Miami, or even if we have a public shopper, you'll never know. Did you know while you were eating it at, at Tanuki that we have uh, probably 4,000 shoppers come through the shopping mall I know. Yeah. in that two hours? No. It, because we created an oasis. That's incredible. And in most cities you go to, they always have like a little river walk too, you know? And like, I really yes. felt like Miami never really had that. And you guys are on the forefront. Of your, I mean, you're going to create that park towards the end as well too. It's going to be like an open space for the general public to come in and hang out too. Correct. We are we are building a two-acre green space on the east side of River Landing. Again, a place for the public right. to come and hang out. We think that when you you do that, You'll shop at River Landing. You'll go to a restaurant at River Landing. 100%. But you're not obligated yeah. to do it. And it's not, we, we're not making it difficult to come to River Landing. We make it easy. The parking's easy. The traffic is easy. There's two ways to get in and out off the highway. Our biggest problem is people like you guys have been driving by it and go, what is that over there? No. But once you figure out what's in there and how you get there, People just keep coming back. Last year, we yeah. had uh, record numbers. Yeah, I mean, I think I, every time I, I, you know, we have this conversation, we've had it multiple times, I always feel like it's the place that everybody sees, but that nobody, they haven't gone they haven't to. explored it. Yeah, they haven't explored it. Yeah, you know, but it's, it's funny. We we have had some people that have noticed it and actually shopped there. Uh, Shakira shopped at Hobby Lobby. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I saw a video. The video went viral. Uh, and uh, Alex Earl shopped shops at our Ulta oh, God. and our Publix. My daughter will go and, <laughs> you know, be staking out there. My son stakes her. Okay, stakes there you out go. for that okay. opportunity, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I imagine you probably see some crazy stuff going on in that building or across in the river, et cetera. We, we certainly have. I mean, out on the river, you certainly see there's a lot of boat traffic, and some of those boats are wild. Oh, you want to you want to get the dinghy and follow out that follow that <laughs> boat out there is what you want to do and see what that boat's going to do. But I think Miami overall is just you know we have some uh, characters living in the city. You know, so no matter where you go in the city, you oh, always God, see we have characters. Something that's you know <laughs> video recording um, worthy. Oh, yeah. You know, to yeah. put up. You know, just this week we had Ultra, yeah. you know, and then you see all these people just swimming in mud and just things along those lines. Uh, yeah, they, th- they, th- they were back in Woodstock or something. They were channeling some that Woodstock. went that went vir- that went national. It was on the yeah, national news. Like, yeah. yeah, we 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 yeah. But listen, we get videos of stuff in pool parties, people yes. naked. Yeah. You know, when, once we'll the DMs start post. coming in, we just not, we're not really allowed to post that type of yeah. stuff. The, the, you know, Instagram will take you down, but uh, we do get your videos. We do take a look at them, <laughs> and then we decide. Then, yeah, we decide. Uh, is this? Is this? Are we allowed to post it? We're gonna get in trouble. We have uh, towed the line, but we already got a slap in the wrist a couple of times by Instagram. So yeah, like don't do this again, or you're out. You're out at least for a couple of more months. They, 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 remove, they remove our monetizing yeah. status. So you know. yeah. So Andrew, another quick question. Tell me what is what is missing. What do you feel is missing in River Landing? What, what, out of all the stuff, all okay, we got, we got the publics, we got this, we got. What do you feel is something that the the people in the area would would benefit from having a River Landing? Well, we're missing sporting goods. Okay, uh, uh, we like what, like 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 a Dick Sporting Good, maybe. Uh, well, we at, at one point Dick's was interested in our center, and then they bought Sports Authority, and they went forward with the deal in uh, in Midtown. So. They weren't willing to open a second store so close. Right. Um, but a smaller 5,000 square foot sporting goods store, uh, we're missing that. We're missing electronics, right? The only game in town is is a Best Buy. Uh, and they don't do, again, we have, we're fortunate that we're leased. We're 97% leased. So I have one, one 5,000 square foot um space that right now is an events we're using as event space as a pop-up event space 
and I have a second 4,000 square foot space, which we're using as curated local retail that right. we, we curate the, the maker of goods into that space. So I have those two spaces and I have a thousand square foot office on the river. That's probably in my opinion, perfect for a yacht broker. That's it. That's what we have in, in our retail footprint. Right. We have more in our office footprint, but, uh, but that's all we have in our retail footprint. You know, that event space with that view, it's a view of the city. You know, it's all glass walls. It's, you know, beautiful. Oh, the, the place is, the place beautiful, is beautiful. spectacular to do an event it's in that place. You, I mean, the, the guy that runs it, Ken, uh, Kenny Daniels, he calls the space Sweet Seven. Yeah. He's had some events there that have been beautiful. Like, it's, I, it's I, that it lends itself. I mean, it lends yeah. itself. And then with the concrete floors, the high ceilings, the glass on the walls. You know, from ground to top, it's beautiful view out to the bay. It's it's, it's, it's honestly a no brainer. I'm surprised that it's not rented. You know, I'm very surprised that something like that hasn't been taken up. I, I think on the five thousand square foot space, the retailers are looking for um, proof that the center works. Got yeah, and I think this is the first year that we can say we opened in 2020. It was COVID, right? And uh, we had about uh, two million guests in by 2022 we had uh 3.6 million guests in 2020 for uh, 2023 we had one po we had a 1.1 million increase to 4.6 million okay. guests um we had an increase of 23 percent in our in our visitors and customer base to the retail shopping mall yeah. so um that shows the proof, and I think the smaller retailers in the categories we're missing then are more prepared to take a okay. risk in a market that, let's face it, uh, if you didn't know what was there before, you wouldn't know that it's underserviced. In retail, it's under underserviced. It's underutilized. What is it? So imagine explaining that to national retailers who think of Miami as Miami Beach. Right. Yeah, that's a very so. That's a good question because I'm going to answer, but I'm going to tell you this question. So financing guys, investors are looking at our podcasts, come to their mind. Is Miami saturated? Do we still have opportunities in your view? Does Do we still have room to tell all these other guys, do come to Miami and, and, and open up here, open up there? We still have a, a, a lot of people moving to Miami. Right. And the reality is... We're a consumer community, okay. right? That's what South Florida yep. is. Absolutely. We consume stuff. We're huge consumers. We studies show that in South Florida, we save less money than anywhere else in the country, uh -huh. and we spend more on goods and services. Wow. Uh, fun fact: we have more Ferraris in Miami than Italy. Really? Go figure. Damn. And we, we don't have, have, we don't have the room. Is that is that all that PPP loans that went out? Oh, for COVID? Oh, uh, I'm not touching that one. We got, <laughs> we got to see. We got to see what years the the rise yeah, the, the, the rise of Ferraris came oh, about. All of a sudden, we have more Ferraris in Italy. <laughs> I mean, because where the hell can you really talk drive to that collection. Ferrari here somewhere? You know, <laughs> it's just the Miami crowd from A to here yeah. going to the restaurant. Park I, mean, the car. I have nothing wrong against driving a Ferrari. I love it. You know, it's yeah. Just... But so so we we are a consumer economy. Right. We consume. Uh, there are a couple of our, our retailers that take the position that when they meet their uh, forecasting in sales, they'll open up within a three-mile radius because they figured out that if one store is doing, let's say, $20 million, it's time to open up a store nearby. They, d they look three miles away. They open up a store. That um, store will do equal to the store that was doing $20 million. It's one of the 20. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because we consume. Yeah. Yeah. We also have a huge business in uh, retail tourism. So people fly here, they shop, they There's fly shop. home. Yeah, and yeah. I've seen it in all in Dolphin Mall. Dolphin Mall. Yeah. Oh, you go to Dolphin Thieves. Mall, you see everybody with their little. We had so our. I, I don't monitor a lot of uh, uh, our, our retail sales, but my my our management office is at at River Landing next to TJ Maxx. It's amazing to me how quickly TJ Maxx runs out of suitcases. Oh, People buy them, they fill them up, they fly yep. home. And they could load up on a Friday with suitcases. That's it. By Monday, they need new yeah. inventory. That's it. Yeah. I never uh, knew how much people like buying suitcases until I got married. I started traveling with my wife. 
So and now we travel with two or three, and then she's picking up stuff. We were recently in Thailand, Japan. We had to buy a suitcase over there just to put m more shit into. She just like yeah. bought the streets, you know. Okay, well, I mean, I, well, we want to say shit, but I think I good stuff. At least more good stuff for more stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, as a single man, you kind of just like, you know, you're just kind of just moving you along. Know what? And stuff, your wife, you know? she's buying shit. Yeah, no, it ends up being gifts for everyone, you know, and little souvenirs and things along the way. Let's just hope she's not gonna hear this podcast. Yeah, she, <laughs> she probably will. <laughs> It's chill yeah, no, about it, but, but 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 I mean, listen. That's a question we all get because I mean, we see other podcasts out there, and you see people talking about the housing and this and that. And you know, some people always comment that you know, what has Miami already done? You know, is it? But this explanation you just gave now, it makes so much sense. And and to your point, I mean, I was just seeing today another report of why all these celebrities or other people still continue moving to to miami you're talking about the basils you're talking about this you're talking about that all these folks are coming down listen there there is breaks let's be honest you know in in the state of florida you know uh, some breaks within uh, you know taxes or stuff like that but i think it's not only that i think it's also it's part the, of life the, the culture and the lifestyle that people yeah. like the miami thing it's 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 all that we yeah. are we have low taxes the barriers to do business here are, low. are very low. the The cost of living is is high for the average person, but compared to New York City or San Francisco or Chicago, yeah, it, it it's it's affordable compared. And we have a lot of foreigners coming here, so compared to London or Paris or Toronto or Montreal, uh, etc., it, it's uh, it's extremely affordable. Right. I read an article today that said. Rents, average rents in the United States are going to be six dollars. Well, the average rents in Miami are somewhere around four dollars. So we're two dollars below the national average, yeah. if you believe the economics that came out today. No, yeah. right. which is showing you that we still have room to growth. Plus, come on, except for August, September, and October, our weather. Bar none is the best it is. in the By country, it right? Is. It is. And, and so, there's people that still love the August, that August weather. So who wouldn't want to be here? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. we've seen the, the, the influx of people after COVID was really like, you know, I'm crazy. You know, everybody, with the, we were one of the first states that were just kind of like open after like, you know, 60 days or so. Yeah. Really, and and you Texas and then yeah, Florida was along those lines. Um, we were always open at River yeah. Landing because we're, yeah. we were construction that was critical so we were declared critical. So we never closed yeah. in COVID. We had to practice, you know, safety, safety and, 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 yeah. and whatnot. And, yeah. and, and, you know, we had to, if workers had COVID, maybe certain areas of the project shut down. But uh, the mayor declared us critical infrastructure to the county. And so we were open. Oh. The challenge was to get our retailers to open in COVID. Yeah. A lot, and, and, and you're kind of, peeling away and, and to a degree on how the negotiations with like a big realtor nationwide go. A lot of the people here, you know, they may be entrepreneurs, they own property, yeah. but they normally deal with like a little typical commercial shopping center. How is it negotiating or trying to bring one of these big major chain companies into believing into your project? Kind of walk me through that a little bit. It really depends upon what submarket you're going into. So for, for river landing, because I think that's what you're asking about, it, it was a challenge because we're an unknown market. We were a, an emerging market. Everybody that knew Miami, it's Miami Beach, it's Biscayne, it's North Miami, it's Coral Gables. It's its not the health district in Miami. Um, and so that was a challenge. I think that the, the uh, turning point for us was we applied for to the county for what's called uh, the GOB bond um, uh, infrastructure program. The county voters passed a a uh, an ordinance that said there was a hundred million dollars of county funds set aside bond money set aside to be used to for the county to help get what what they called game changing projects reshape areas of the county. So we applied for that program, and the county the commission, in a vote of I think twelve to one declared that we were a game-changing project what we were going to do oh, yeah. in the city of miami was going to change the county long term and the the economics 
of the district that we were looking to build in. Um, uh, and All so the- when the <laughs> county approved that, and the county put seven and a half million dollars of its money behind our project, the the retailers looked at us differently. The financial markets looked at us differently because we had a stamp of approval of the county that this was going to be a place was, that was going to be redeveloped, right. and the county was prepared to put its money behind the project. And I think that was a game changer for us. That's huge. So we were a game changer to the city and the yeah. county, but the county was a game changer for us. And that allows you to obviously open up and get those type of retail. That allowed that allowed us to get into the financial markets and to and to negotiate leases and show the retailers that that there was a long term play here. I and I w- would uh, I I would uh, I would bet that each one of our retailers would say that they are successful beyond what they budgeted for this area. It's always a good thing. It's always a good amazing. Thing. Always a good thing. Always a good thing. So. One of the biggest things also that I think that that people should take away from today's uh, podcast is River Landing is a place that you need to go and explore. You need to go and check out. I mean, I, I'm going to be honest. I mean, before we, we started working and, and, and going to Andrew and, and seeing the place, I would always see it. Uh, you know, I was one of those people. And I would say, Really? You know, but then I figured then little by little, when I talked to some people, I have about like five friends of mine that live there that I don't even know live there. And, and, and for them, it's, they do not want to live anywhere else. They're so excited right there to live in that area because they're so close to the brick where they're play, close to the beach. They're close to um, Coral Gable, South Miami. For them, it's very central. So they're, you know, for me, it was an eye opener, a game changer when I saw the fact of, the residents that people can live there, the fact of the stores, I mean, are crazy. I mean, just the fact of Publix for me is like, you know, I mean, I love Publix. So, yeah. I mean, and, and Publix is not paying us money, but I love Publix. We should get a sponsor by yeah, Publix. I here. love Publix because for me, Publix is just, you know, excellent. But yeah, their, their shopping experience is barred their shopping. You experience. can have you can have yeah. Walmart and Publix, and you know yeah. Walmart's much cheaper than Publix, and right. you still go to Publix just for the experience. I just, just, just for me. But again, going back to that, it and and again, just blew me away when we had dinner with you the other day at tanuki the food spectacular the service what's the the gentleman's name he was spectacular the, Sergio Giorgio the chef oh my god what a, what a delight what a what a what a, what a way to you know get received at a restaurant you know I mean smash the plate yeah well that was because something else but still you know everybody the service I before I even got there we got there yeah. what did the girl say what are you in the mood for I go tequila today or good for a scotch she goes well come over come behind the bar let me show you all the scotches we have you know i mean not, not many people do that nobody so we're, they're trying to create yeah na- the neighborhood right yeah this is a place that you can come hang out it doesn't matter whether you're hanging out of the coffee shop at facel or tanuki with the sushi and asian food or you're just sitting at the river we actually have a, a cute little couple almost every day they take their their tandem bike they yeah. ride to the river oh. with, their, with their lunch. They but sit by the river. They read books. They tandem home. That's pretty they nice. don't shop. They it's don't eat. But, but that's why we built the river walk for that to happen. Wait yeah. to the park. When the park comes, everybody's going to be doing the same thing. They're going to be I, in the park. Hope so. That's, yeah. that's going to happen. Yeah. So I have two other questions that came in from the public here from the Miami. Um, one of them is, what is the craziest thing you've seen on the river? What's oh. the craziest thing you've seen on the river? Well, it's it's the boat traffic. The <laughs> the men and women that like to show off their body parts as they float on down the oh, river. Okay, all right. That's probably the craziest so it's thing. It's like a movie out there. Well, it it is getting filmed. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I I have seen I have seen the filming. little candid camera moments there. <laughs> It's probably an only in date kind of thing. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> or OnlyFans. Yeah. Right, right. OnlyFans. <laughs> OnlyFans. No, only <laughs> Scratch the only in date part. All right. And... No, but the OnlyFans, well, you have to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to. That could be a good one. All right. So. River Land, the only fans page. We'll just post stuff. I don't think you should do that. <laughs> no, I think that's, we'll, we'll that's, not the mar- that's not the kind of marketing I think that you ought to be doing. <laughs> All right. Uh, Growing up in Miami, all of us, I think, have uh, gone through this, and oh, we boy. know that the construction here just takes oh. decades 
you know, the 836, certain extensions, bridges. You just see them going on and on in years and years. Wow. You guys did River Landing in a little over three years? A little over three years. How did you get a project like that done so much faster than us doing a bridge extension? Having a good construction, construction management guy like Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the plaque. No, it, it, it was that we, we went to the city and the county, and we treated them like our partner. Yeah. Uh, we... Our architecture, the the walls of the retail are precast concrete. Uh, the apartments are uh, mostly glass. Very little uh, block wall and stucco that exists in the building. Um, we opened up the Riverwalk and our center atrium as public places. And all of those things we did with city and county um, input. So that they viewed themselves as our partner in the process. And because of that, we were able to have relationships with planning, zoning, building people, water, sewer, et cetera. Very important. That, that um, engaged them in the project. And that's how we did it. Was I feel? I feel. Okay. Um, I think um, for our last question is, what else do you guys have planned for the city? Is there any other projects you're working on at this point? Well, across from River Landing, we're going to add another 425 apartment units. And that's what we're planning so far. That was huge. What's the ETA on that? Uh, I think it's going to be 2027. Good. Yeah. That's beautiful. We can't do it exact. Time around, we're going to have an oh, With Andrew, we can have an Yeah, we can have an Andrew's one of those guys that we're gonna... gets it done. <laughs> so, once again... To all of our uh, listeners and our viewers, we, you know what, I, I think we're gonna do something. I think, I think that we're gonna, you know what, we should, we should come up with a day for a day in Miami and do a happy hour, a day in Miami viewers at in in Tanuki. That'll work. You know what I'm saying? That we can, we can post it on our on our on our site and we can just get all. All of our all of our viewers and all of our followers yeah. to come. Listen, in. if you're frustrated, you could do a day in a day in Miami day at uh, CKO Boxing and hit some boxing bags. Is that it? There, there you go. go. There you go. We can do that. Yeah, yes. go. I would like to see me and Manny there. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> a little kickboxing. This will be this will be interesting. Yeah, kickboxing. Time, yeah. that'll be funny. You're not gonna there, see. Okay, I, we have a CK, we have a CKO Boxing gym. Yeah, and there's a Abuelita that uh, that comes in boxes. It is so great. She's got to be in her 80s and she, she that? boxes her own way at her own pace doing her go own check thing her out. Yeah. but she hits the bag we're gonna go check her out we got we got a post on a day man i think we should you go should. To, i think we should we go should to all totally places. should yeah we could do a little day miami series at each location or something at you know? least you know a little we'll little, be with andrew there too like andrew, hey, andrew, check like, right here. like it could be like a tour of you know the place and you can take us here. Here's 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 Abuelita. Yeah. Look at her kick, looking and kicking butt right there on the six thirty. Six during the morning. Two days a week and one day a week at five thirty. She's Damn. boxing. Damn. Crazy, that's right? That's my type of people. She's looking for a job. Or... <laughs> she's, she, and she's so happy. <laughs> we have to ask Abuelita. It's so great. I like well, you, guys, man. so we know we're going to do, we're going to come back. We're going to do a tour of the place. We're going to do a tour of the place and we can do a Check happy hour for all of our day in Miami followers. We're going to do a, we can come up or, with, uh, what's the chef game, the name again? Um, oh, we're going to invite him to the grand opening of the new location. No, but with the chef, we'll create that day, a little day in Miami cocktail. I like it. So everybody at day in Miami uh -huh. can come. Uh, at Tanuki. At Tanuki. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we have, we, we have like that. 350 people on the broadcast channel. I invite people from there. That's it. That's it. I mean, join our broadcast channel so you get special invites. Absolutely. Yeah. So check out a river landing and we will get back to you when we have the date that we're going to do a little happy over there. Andrew, thank you so much for coming. Thank you guys thank so much. And letting us know everything about River Landing. Appreciate it. Thank you.